Hello everyone. Today we celebrate the, the feast or remember a day of consecrated life, which here at the Newman Center, we have three people in the consecrated life, which is any religious. And so we want to take a couple minutes here to, to kind of explore that theme and explore a little bit more what that means. Consecrated life uh, and how that relates to us. How does that affect us lay people of the church? Uh, so we have Sister Kathleen here, and her order is the School Sisters of Notre Dame, and our Father Byron here, uh, a Claritian, and also Father Paul, who can't join us today, but is also a Claritian. Um, tell me a little bit about what, what consecrated life means. Sister Kathleen, I'll start with you. What, what the, what, what's the big deal about consecrated life, that religious life? What does that mean? Because that, that sounds a little uh, high and mighty. Well, it's anything but high and mighty, I think. Um, <laughs> consecrated life came into the church really around the first century uh, when folks decided that they wanted to set the, they, they didn't go, want to go into marriage, you know, they wanted to be set aside for the complete work of the church and to follow what God wanted them to do. Um, but it didn't really flower until about the fourth century when uh, certain people came along. The, the desert fathers went out into the desert and all that, and then the, the rise of, of orders in the community. But for us, consecrated life means uh, becoming, hearing the call of God and becoming a member of a religious community of men or women. and. I happened to do that. I felt the call of God and to live it out through a religious community. Um, and I chose the School Sisters of Notre Dame. Can you talk to us about your order? Oh, okay. Um, I looked it up today. We're 188 <laughs> 88 years. Uh, it, it was started in uh, 1833. And it was started as a result of um, a kind of a, a revolution. Uh, our foundress, her name was Caroline Gerhardinger, and she was taught in Bavaria. Her father was, um, what was he? He was the captain of a, a river boat that went up and down the Danube River. He, he made, she came from wealthy things. He made a good salary, and so, he could send her to a school, and the school was run by the canonists of St. Augustine. So mm. our roots are in the Augustine spirituality, which focuses on, you know, community, uh, fraternity, uh, and Trinitarian life. And she was 13 years old when that part of Bavaria was taken over as a result from the French Revolution mm. and all schools were stopped and so there was it was a school for young ladies and being 13 years old um, it seems kind of young today but the priest in that parish said I want you to continue to teach the children wow. and she and three other young girls carried on the school, not officially, but uh, kind of in secret in the, in the basement of the church. And that was how she, uh, I think, heard God's call. And as a teacher, she began to teach. She did not formally start the order, or it began, until she was 33 years old. Wow. So for that length of time, they, 20 lived, years. To, yeah. Yeah, they lived together in community. They lived the vows, because consecrated life, you, you lived the evangelical vows of poverty and chastity at the time. And, and it's now consecrated so, celibacy so, uh, uh, and uh, obedience. So about after 20 years, she said, let's just make this official and make it an order, that it seems like. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, and, and but then they had to go and appeal for it and everything. Yeah, yeah, the whole and process. And she was threatened with excommunication oh, wow. because she did not want it to be under a bishop where the bishop would have total control and uh, that was a big Father, then, huh? Father Whitman and Father Sebastian Job, who were kind of her mentors, uh, actually um, stood behind her, wrote a constitution, and they submitted it. And in the constitution, we are only answerable to the Holy Father. 
Wow. So we're not under any bishop. So that she had the freedom then to go out yeah. into the world. So. Neat. Father, yes. how about the Claritian order? Yes, uh, and, uh, and again, consecrated life. I think um, the other day we were at confirmation class with Sister Kathleen, and she said something very beautiful. She says, like, we have a call within a call. We all have a universal call to be ourselves, to be happy, to be the best that we can be and make the world better. But then how do we live out, you know, particularly that call? I think, uh, you know, we can choose marriage, we can choose single life, or we can choose a religious life or consecrated life. I think it's kind of a kind of a synonym in a way, you know, right now. But um, the Claritians, you had the French Revolution, you know, we had the Spanish uh, Civil War, you know. So again, in those times, this young man, Anthony Claret, you know, he wanted just to preach. He wanted to share the good news with everyone and he kind of was going crazy. He's like, how? How can I help people, you know, remember who they are? So he wanted to be, um, he joined the Jesuits. He was kicked out from the Jesuits. Then he was kicked out from seminaries. So I guess third is a charm, you know, he became a priest. But as soon as he was ordained a priest, he went to Rome and says, like, ah, send me, I want to be a missionary. So that's why, you know, he was sent to Cuba, he was sent uh, to um, Spain, and um, he began to have followers who were inspired by how he uh, reached out to people. So that's why our name, you know, the official name is the um, um, Sons of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, but we go by Claritians. And um, again, you know, what we do is basically just go around trying to preach the gospel using all ways possible. How neat. Uh, it, it's crazy to think, at least in these two examples, and I'm sure other orders follow that, that out of chaos comes flowers something beautiful, right? That lasts forever and ever. And I think that's a true testament in how many times we see that theme in, in God's teachings, right? I, I, I have a, a little quote here. This is our constitution, uh, which is our rule. Crazy. And uh, there is this used to be my favorite, well, it still is. Uh, we, when, we, when I first joined, we were constantly having this quoted to us. And it's, but only half of it. I didn't find out the other half until no. later on. And I think there was a reason why that. But, you know, the, the part that was quoted to us a lot was, all the works of God proceed slowly and in pain. Hmm. And I think that was kind of because they thought we had to proceed slowly and in pain you know <laughs> out of suffering comes yeah. you know That's what you were right there. Yes. Uh -huh. but then the second part of this is but then their roots are the sturdier and they're flowering the lovelier and that is a quote from our founders and I think uh -huh. a, a lot of this these re religious li life always kind of springs up to answer a, a need it, it springs up, up out of maybe the pain or the chaos or mm -hmm. the revolution mm -hmm. or being rejected or whatever. And then it, it takes root because each of our founders or founders and foundresses had received a charism. You know, uh, we talk about it a lot. And ours was to, our official name is Poor School Sisters of Notre Dame because we focused, she focused on poverty and Eucharist. Mm. And um, she, her, her charism was she saw all these little children, especially girls, not being educated. And if you don't educate little girls, who become the mothers and the first teachers of the next generation, then yeah. things can yeah. continue to go downhill. And so she did that until we came to America. And when we came to America, and the order had not officially been uh, accepted, except for about 10, 12 years before that. And she came over to the United States and uh, left a 26-year-old uh, Mother Caroline in charge wow. over here and went back because she, she said I am not for this missionary work <laughs> and over here they went to uh, Milwaukee and Minnesota and Baltimore and they found out that only the wealthy were being educated and boys and girls they, they opened their schools to the boys also. Neat. Um, there's a lot of names thrown out there to to associate religious people. You got monks, friars, sisters, nuns, uh, brothers, 
Uh, w tell me why so many different names, and are they all considered consecrated life? Yeah, there is a, a whole variety of names, you know, and uh, it seems like the church, the Catholic Church has its own, you know, vocabulary when it comes down to it. But um, <laughs> what's really important is like, you know, this, this, this woman, this man, you know, found a place in which they can really live out whatever gift that they, God has given them. You know, and uh, that's the first thing. So the very first thing is to know that people make a, uh, and I think um, Sister Kathleen, you and I, I mean, uh, when we make our final vows, the perpetual vows, we um, make a promise in front of people and in front of God that we want to well, abide by the constitutions, have <laughs> help us all. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, you know, hopefully whatever dream, whatever passion, whatever um, desire that the founders, the founder had, you know, hopefully we can continue to live it out, you know, and through our actions. So that is the first thing, the consecrated life. Um, now religious, that's a very, you know, I mean, cause you can be religious, you know, by just uh, being practicing the religion, you know, mm -hmm. but um, so I guess it's just like a interchangeable, you know, right. uh, uh, um, names basically when it comes to religions. Then uh, when we have like the community, I can speak for the men community. Um, basically, you leave your call within your call and then you leave another call within the call and within the call. <laughs> it's like, how can I be a clerician? Can I be through, can I be a clerician being a permanent deacon, a religious brother or a priest? So basically, you know, and, and I myself, when I was discerning, I really was thinking about being a brother because I wanted to have Sundays free so I can be, you know, teaching, you know, catechesis and doing these things that because of masses schedules, I can't, you know, but um, so, you know, you have to discern where, again, when it comes down to your gifts, we have a brother in Missouri, he, um, he works through art, he creates mosaics and uh, paintings and all those things, so he knew from the beginning that that's how he wanted to evangelize, so, you know, he says like, you know, I don't think I'm going to be a priest because I'm happy being a brother because I can really evangelize through art, you know, and that's what he's doing. Um, so again, you know, um, now, f like as to friars, I think there are certain communities that they have like their own terminology. And I think friars comes down more like to, I don't even want to say monastic, but actually yeah. more, like, more like monastic communities. And then there is a difference between that too, you know, it's like we have like like apostolic, you know, um, right. religious communities, we are there with the world, and monastics, they just retreat, you know, and just pray. So they, they don't leave the convent, you know. Uh, we actually, I think we're never in the convent, right? Well, we get together. No, he's not in the convent, no. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, again, you know, um, and I think some communities, they call themselves like friars, which is like basically another word for frater, which is like brothers, right. you know, fellowship, you know. But, um, and then, uh, uh, about religious sisters and nuns? Sis, I'm not a nun. Oh. You, you Me know, neither. And those are, <laughs> <laughs> those are interchangeable all the time, and that's what people identify. We are an apostolic congregation, meaning we go out. But there was a real struggle in the beginning because the, the template offered for religious life was more monastic. And so we had a cloister. We had the liturgical hours of the day and we said all of that and no one could ever come into the cloister you know that's one of the reasons I think I was attracted to the sisters is because I took piano lessons on Saturday and hmm. I can't play piano at all <laughs> but I continued to go to the piano lessons because my parents thought I should play but my sister in her half hour the, the nuns would invite me into the convent to help them. Uh -huh. I would clean, I would help cook, I would help do, but I got to go into the inner it's sanctum that, yeah. and I could see that they were just normal people. You know, I, I would be out hanging their wash on the line and it, I was hanging their underwear. You know, <laughs> the, A lot of the mystery went <laughs> away, but they accepted me into their community that huh. way. And so that kind of spurred the desire to want to do that, you know? So my piano lessons, which were fruitless, <laughs> helped me 
to actually farm. They provided fruit in a different branch. <laughs> exactly. Yes. yes. That's yes. exactly right. Yes. <laughs> they were watering over here and it popped so, up both. <laughs> but I always say I'm an, a nun or whatever, but I'm not. Gotcha. You know, I'm a sister. Oh, interesting. Um, so what's the big deal about being a religious, about entering a community and and a lay person, which a lay person is someone is not a part of a community, uh, a specific religious community, right? So, I mean, why why would someone want to become a religious, a part of a consecrated lifestyle? First of all, religious women are considered part of the laity. We're not clergy. Mm -hmm. We're not a, a different segment. Uh, they have to give us a fancy name, and I don't know what it is. But we're members <laughs> of the laity, who who have been chosen and choose to live a vowed life, publicly, like you brought up your public, you know, vows. Wow. We proclaim those in public because we are, serve the public, and we also. Um, we don't have anything special other than we've vowed our life to the service of the church through Jesus' call to us. Yeah, and and I think also religious community, you know, um, I think in a way, Sister Kathleen mentioned that word charism. Charism, that word means gift, gift of God. You know, when God... Um, set up this whole plan of salvation he i think uh god was really like thinking of all bases possibly to cover you know so god knew that you know that the church itself was going to need some help you know like only priests you know will do this but chances are you know priest you know will just be dispensing sacraments but how about education how about catechesis how about going to other places that are beyond the diocese, you know? So little by little through history, you see how like at, in, at, at important events of life, like new charisms, new gifts of the Holy Spirit flourish, you know? And I think that's what religious life comes in. So in that way, you know, I think, um, I think by its nature, the charism of religious life is to be with the lady in other ways than sacramental, you know? And, uh, uh, you know, and to me that blows my mind because um, certainly as religious we have more freedom to move around. Certainly as religious we have um, uh, uh, other ways to, to, to evangelize, to learn from the people as well. And I think, at least I can, I can tell for our communities from what I know about you, it's like um, they really, from day one when we entered the community, they said like, we are not that different from the lady. We work with the lady you know and, and and work on a mission together as opposed to like you know i, I guess in diocesan priesthood it's like you learn to be a pastor you know you learn mm -hmm. to lead people you know but you know so that's something that's in us you know a little bit and we try to do to the best of capabilities you know you know and i think the real freedom too yeah. is the other vows poverty uh, that was mm -hmm. not my favorite one you know, uh, it, uh, well, really, my not favorite one is obedience, but <laughs> <Mine> um, <too. laughs> you, you go there. No, I don't want to go. <laughs> Let's dialogue a little bit. Yeah. Um, but th the freedom that the vows give us, I mean, poverty in and of itself, I, I really technically own nothing, you know, but I have everything I need. Um, my coat, which I love. <laughs> for my birthday um, I have everything I need um, it, it, it's I, I don't want for anything and um, it's it's a gift to me you know um, and I don't it, it, the, the community like we just got I got a thing from the government the other day and it said here is your stimulus debit card you know and I'm like okay, now what do I do with this, <laughs> you know? Uh, and so I, I, we have a finance council, finance group, and so I emailed her and I said, what do I do with this card? I don't know what to do with this card because I, I got a check the last time and I sent it in and it goes to the order. And she said, activate it. We will take the amount 
the six hundred dollars out of your what we put into your account for you to live because I have to make a budget and you use that because that's something new that mm -hmm. just came it sounds so interesting because within each order you, you we're hearing constitutions obedience all these things it's a really complex system within these orders which I gather some things are good and some things really are a pain in the butt it sounds like right mm -hmm. um, so it's really neat because a lot of things we don't we don't we don't see that we see a priest or a brother or a sister and that's all we think we just think oh they just entered it and that was it but it seems a very complex a lot more complex uh, system right. within the order themselves right and even community for me out here in California we have something like 23 sisters that are school sisters of Notre Dame how do we stay connected we're not living in a convent anymore mm. we're not you know so how do we stay connected with each other and uh, I'm on a committee that goes back not now but we used to fly back to these community meetings you guys have community meetings and it's it governs and moves the whole group and we try to discern what God wants us to do for the whole order and like you were saying when you lost your glasses I said to them when are you going to get them oh I have to go through the whole process of getting all the state you know <laughs> yeah but you know what it's not nearly as complicated mm -hmm. as the married life or as the people <laughs> out there the lady yeah. who have to like go to work raise children you know um, deal with whatever it is you know and still make room for church you know in a way that's why I think you know it's a matter of justice and social justice you know that uh, um, the priest you know the sisters the religious you know I mean we have like all this really moral duty to really work for people you know because we have it easy all in all you know it's a complicated system you know to, to to become a religious yes but still you know we go home you know uh and uh, we just go and we don't have to deal with like you know oh my my child is sick you know i have to go to the hospital even though i'm tired you know uh mm -hmm. so you guys you know the lady has like really so you know in that uh like the complex life and we learn from the lady you know how to like really keep it all together you know and i think to me that raises the bar and that's why it's like well we don't have these things we just it's more like a linear life in a way you know it's like there's no excuse that you know i can say like oh you know i, I I'll, I'll i'll go to visit that person you know who is in the hospital tomorrow or you know pick up this call today yeah, i can we can wait you know so yeah um so entering religious life, discerning a vocation, right? We hear all these things. Why has the church dedicated a day just for consecrated life? No, oh, 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 sister has a that? great, no, you have a great story about like when you profess your vows. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> uh, we, because of consecra the consecrated life, uh, the, the feast day on February 2nd, okay, when I first entered, you you wore a long habit and everything, but you didn't have the veil. It, and it, you didn't get your regular veil. I mean, it goes in stages, but anyway, we did not wear a veil. And on February 2nd, that's after like six months of being within the, in the order. And so they figured that you, you make a decision to enter your canonical year, which means your legal six months of passioncy huh. and then go on to be a, a, a novice in the next in six months but you receive a veil and that veil then you have to wear uh to church only to church every every day but you didn't, didn't wear it until you got to the novitiate the six months later then you got a, a white veil which you know uh, was that but this was when you officially stepped from your lay life into a consecrated life you know we didn't know at the time we were still lay people mm. you know that was that but that for us was our official mm. segue into a little more of the structure so yeah. exactly yeah. you know and, and i think it's beautiful to highlight that day you know like mm -hmm. the presentation of the lord and also like february 2nd the day in which like um, we remember these people that somehow are responding to a call from god to 
hey, help out, you know, in, in, in the works of Jesus Christ, you know. And I think religious life, you know, really kind of a, uh, really like reflects what Jesus did. You know, Jesus was walking all around, going to places. Uh, who knows, you know, maybe he was trying different kinds of foods, you know, he was like meeting with all these people, maybe seeing, um, speaking or, you know, learning different languages, you know. Uh, and I think religious life, you know, around the world does that. You know, think about the evangelization in the Americas, you know. I think it was the Franciscans yeah. um, uh, uh, that, you know, a religious community that actually came and, you know, started evangelizing, you know, like talking about Christ, you know, in, in, in the Americas. And now we have like a, a young church, you know, in, in, in the Americas because of those, you know, those religious people, you know. Um, think about um, what well, Pope Francis, he's a Jesuit. The Jesuits are also a religious community, you know. So, and think about like his revolution of love that he's doing because, mm -hmm. you know, he as a religious wasn't able to see um, a, a, another face of church, you know, the suffering church, the poor church, the people that, you know, had to deal like single mothers, you know, and the divorced people who feel like, you know, relegated, you know, and, 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 and all these things, you know, that uh, sometimes the religious life, you know, again, it's not a merit on its own, but I think it's just another tool that God has given the church, you know, to hopefully, you know, be faithful to the message of Christ. So, you know, I think it, in, in that wisdom, I think, you know, the church has, you know, uh, basically asked, you know, religious consecrated life day is basically a day in which we remember our religious people and just try to pray for them. Right. And I, it, can I just add yes. I think God is, is working today we don't know where religious life will, will be in the future because yeah. we're looking in our own order the the growth is happening in Africa the growth is happening in South mm -hmm. America for our community yeah. it's not happening in the United States mm -hmm. you know and so which I I don't understand I think I'm a pretty good example so <laughs> <why would> somebody <laughs> want to be like me you know but you know it's 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 not happening in the United States but I really think something else is happening we have more associates now those are lay members of our they want to be associated with us the order and and they have like a little formation program and everything else and and we have more associates in America or in the United States than we do anywhere else in the world so what is that going to do how are we going to be changed or where are these young people right now who are making life decisions. Maybe they'll see at the, it coming out of this chaos and the pandemic and all of that, there may be a, a new flowering of that, but it may be take a different form. Or and to those, to those, to, to, to finish our discussion here, to those who may be coming to those big life decisions, yeah. uh, to those who may be already considering a, a vocation in the religious life, what do you have to say to them uh, that may um, encourage them or at least uh, inspire them to look uh, to lift the veil under this uh, uh, religious life and then what should they consider from both of you actually yeah. you want to um, yeah um, first of all I think and we, we had this talk you know in the right. in, in the confirmation class um, first of all pray talk to God ask God what is it that I'm led to be and to do. Second, look at yourself. Look at what you're good at. Look at the things that give you passion when you do them. Look at uh, those things that give meaning to your life, you know, when you do them. Third, you know, um, also talk to somebody who knows you well. Somebody who really knows the good and the bad and who loves you for who you are. That's the people that's gonna give you the same, the, the, the great, uh, uh, you know, the great, uh, the greatest feedback of all. And fourth, and this is uh, uh, Edgar's favorite uh, word, be proactive. Don't <laughs> wait, you know, for a religious community to come and knock on your door. Yeah. You know, you have the internet, you have the phone, look around, you know. If I'm good at music, well, let's look for a community that, that does music, you know. Um, if you want to uh, 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 teach, you know, well, look for a religious community That's that right. teaches, you know. Um, so again, talk to God. Look into yourself, talk to somebody who loves you well, who wishes the best for you, and then do something about it. Right. I just have to bring up this one group, and I, I'm looking for these people. 
you know, around, it's called the nuns and the nuns. Mm -hmm. And the nuns, N-U-N, and the N-O-N-E's. And the N-O-N-E's are young people who have put on their uh, senses, it's religion, none. But yeah. they're spiritual. And we are opening convents that are empty. And there are sisters that are living in convents in their retirement with the N-O-N-E's oh, and forming wow. community. And when I retire, that's what I want to do is I want to go and just hang out Be with, with some the of nuns. these people. Mm -hmm. But I think what you're saying too, you can, when you want to find a job, young people can go on the internet and they can look all around and they can find whatever job. So Google the communities. Yeah. Neat. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of options out there. Uh, it, it, it's all there, like you're saying. It's at your fingertips to, to consider and to look at. So thank you, Sister Kathleen. Thank you, Father Byron. Thank you. On this day of uh, consecration, we ask you to pray for, for those in the consecrated life and those considering a vocation in there. Could be you. And if your parents don't think it's the end of the world, if your child <laughs> says they want to be yeah, in a religious is. life or be in priesthood. Yeah. You know, because you, uh, how you respond to them, you know, is really, really important. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and it's true. I mean, parents think, you know, it's like, I'm going to lose my child forever. And actually, they gain more children because the community, it's really beautiful. They become mm -hmm. one family. Um, then, uh, Edgar, I just want to, you know, just uh, uh, take this opportunity. Thank you for letting us use the John the 23rd uh, Student Lounge. And Edgar is the man here, you know, the campus ministry, you know, um, and there's plenty. I see there's a whole vocation section there, you know, in if you ever like thinking about religious life, hey, just come take out a pamphlet here. That's how it starts. Yeah, yeah. Well, it doesn't hurt. And uh, sister, I mean, if somebody is interested in your community, how can they find out more about well, I, it, they can contact me and I can get them in contact with uh, Sister Bridget and, you know, uh, Stephanie, Stephanie, the ones that were out here, yeah. they came last year. But definitely, I'd be happy to talk with them and see what the opportunities are, you know. Um, and, and likewise. Or, and go to our website. I have a, we have a website, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 21st century. Yeah. <laughs> And for the Clarissians? Same here. Just uh, uh, give me a call or I guess I'm, I, I'm pretty sure I can, you know, you can reach out to Edgar and he can just, you know, show, show you the way. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much again. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.